Hey kids, my name is Amanda, and today we're going to be making our own miniature gardens. The first thing we need to do today is gather our materials. First, you need an egg carton, a bowl of water, a tablespoon, some plant seeds of your choice. I got vegetable, but you can also get flowers, some lolly sticks, a pen for writing, optional paint and a paintbrush, and then some soil. You could either get some from the store or go outside and pick some up from your backyard. This is optional, but if you want to paint your egg carton, you can. I chose to paint mine green. Next thing to do is grab your lolly sticks and write down each plant seed you got. Today I have basil, I have squash, carrots, spinach, lettuce, and tomatoes. I went ahead and already labeled each of my lolly sticks, but you can use your pen and a fresh lolly stick to put down a name. So I'm gonna write tomato, just like this. After you have those all set and ready to go, you wanna go ahead and fill your egg cart cartridges with soil and make sure they're not exactly to the top, just a little bit below just like that. Next thing you want to do is start putting your seeds in. First, I'm going to put in tomato. And just on the top, I'm going to put a little bit of the seeds, just like that. In each, I'm going to put the tomato seeds in two of them. Once you have finished putting all of the seeds in the egg cartridges, you want to go ahead and grab the appropriate lolly stick to put in the egg cartridge. So I have tomato right over here, and I'm gonna put it in just like that. For our last step, you're going to grab your bowl of water and your tablespoon, and you're gonna put a tablespoon amount of water into each of the egg cartridges, just like this. There you go, that is your miniature garden. Now you can watch these grow as you can put them in a window near the sun or outside. You're going to want to water your garden at least once a week. I also have an activity to make an indoor friendly garden. The materials you'll need is an egg carton just like this, Play-Doh of your choice, fabric flowers of your choice, and an optional paintbrush and paint. The optional part of this activity, you could go ahead and paint your egg carton any color that you'd like. I chose pink because it's my favorite color. For the next step of this activity, you want to go ahead and grab your Play-Doh and take it out. You're going to put it into each egg cartridge, just like this. I have blue and red Play-Doh in mine. For the last step of this activity, you want to go ahead and grab your fabric flowers and put them into the Play-Doh just like this. I then went on to finish putting in the rest of my fabric flowers, and this is what a finished project should look like. Every garden is unique, just like you. I hope you had fun doing this activity, and I can't wait to see some of your mini gardens. Thanks! Hi guys, my name is Adriana, and today we are going to be doing an activity with nature and outdoor play. So for this activity, you're gonna need a few items that you'll find outside. And if you can't go outside, you can always ask somebody around you that's able to go out and pick these items for you. And what's cool about this activity is that you can use pretty much anything outside from nature, whether it be rocks, sticks, grass, flowers. But for what I chose, I chose this pine cone. And you have to be careful when you hold these because sometimes they can be a little picky on the, the sides right here. So just be careful when you're grabbing it. The next one that I got is a stick. It's kind of a long stick. And then the third item I got is leaves. And I got three different kind of leaves. So this one is a really skinny leaf. It's kind of long and skinny. The second one that I got, I'll hold it up next to this one is a little bit wider and you can see the difference in them. And then the third one that I got is this bigger leaf with these three parts of the leaves that go out like this. And I really like this one, I thought it was really pretty. And you're also gonna need for this activity some paint. 
which I put on a paper plate like this. I'm using white, blue, and brown, but you could use any colors you want. These are just the ones that I had at my house. And what you're gonna paint on is either paper or a canvas. And I have these two colored papers. I have green and yellow, but you can use any color you want. And I also have this canvas that I painted black already. And I was gonna see what the um, white paint looks like on this black canvas. So we'll try both of those. So first, you're gonna get your paint in front of you. Oh, and make sure you have napkins or paper towels around you because paint could get a little messy and you're gonna wanna wash your hands and wipe them off so you don't get paint everywhere. So first, we could try this little leaf. Let's try it on the black canvas. So I'll show you the canvas and then I will show you what the leaf looks like when we put it on there. So you're gonna dip it into the paint like this. Make sure it's all covered. And we're gonna place it on the paper. And I'm kind of pressing the leaf onto the paper like this. And then I'm gonna just pull it off. And this is what it looks like. That's a pretty cool shape. It's an interesting, it's an interesting shape. There's a little hole in the middle of it. Let's try the big leaf now. We'll try the big one with some white paint. This one's a little hard to get all the paint on, but it doesn't have to be perfect. It's just cool to see what type of patterns this will use on the paper. So I'm gonna put that down on here, press it down a little bit, and then pull it up. This one made like a, it kind of looks like a, a star or something, and it's a lot bigger than that one. So it's cool to see the difference in the smaller leaf compared to the bigger one. And next, I will try this medium-sized leaf, and we'll see what kind of shape we can make with that. Ooh, this one kind of looks like a circle. So these are what your three leaves look like. Next, I'm gonna show you what the acorn looks like, but we'll try it with a different color paint. We could try it on our, our paper over here. So I'm gonna use the yellow paper. I'm gonna lay it out in front of me on top of my paper towel that I have. And I'm gonna get my acorn like this and I'm just gonna dip it into the blue paint. I'm only gonna do one side of it just to see at first what it looks like. So there's the paint on the acorn and we'll just press it onto the paper and see what kind of, what kind of patterns we can make. So this acorn kind of made a couple dots all over the paper but you can use the acorn however you want. Sorry, pine cone, it's a pine cone. Um, so there's some more paint. We can like make some, see if we can make some lines with it. Just have fun with this, go all over the paper. I'll try the, the brown paint now on the other side. So there's the brown paint on that side. and just decorate your whole paper with whatever color paint you want. Next, we're gonna try to use the stick. Let's see how the stick uses, and I'll use some blue first again. We'll swirl it around in there like a little paintbrush, and we'll just go over the paper. When you guys are doing this, you can see what type of patterns and what type of um, shapes you can make with these different um, outdoor nature items and it's really cool to see what you can come up with because there's so many different possibilities and like I said you can use um anything these are just the items that I picked but whatever you decide to use um there's so many different options
Hi everyone, my name is Michaela, and today we're going to be exploring our own feelings and taking times for ourselves. We're going to be doing this through walking. And the great thing about walking is that there are many activities that you can do within it, and they can be done anywhere and at any time. I, for one, am choosing to walk in my backyard, and you can walk in any area that's close to you and where you feel comfortable. The first activity that we're going to do is walking meditation. And you may not have heard of this before, but that's okay, I'm going to explain it to you. Walking meditation is a form of meditation that you just do simply while walking. You take time and just reflect on any um, feelings that you might be feeling, um, good or bad. And the way that you actually do this is by walking in either a circle or a straight line. Although you can do it walking a longer distance, but today I'm going to do it just walking in a straight line and feel free to join me. So I'm just gonna go back and forth and during this time, I'm going to think about anything that might be on my mind and that um, might be worrying me at this, at this time. And I'm also going to focus on my breathing. I'm going to make sure that my breathing is, you know, at a constant and slow pace so that I can really focus on what's up here and what's, what I'm thinking about. So I'm going to start and I'm just going to walk and I'm going to stay quiet. And it's as simple as that. Don't hesitate to walk up and back or in a circle or if you're walking a longer distance then that would be longer as well. But don't be afraid to walk more if you need more time to think about what's going on. Um, it's there's no set time that you have to walk for during walking meditation so you walk as long as you need to for yourself that's what's important and what that's what's great about walking meditation the next activity that we're going to do today is a grounding activity and this is where you use your five sentence to become aware of your surroundings and you can do this on a walk that gives you a little more variety in what and when you're using your senses so the first step in this grounding activity is to identify five things that you see. So for me, on my walk, I see some red stones. That's one thing I see. Something else that I see is some grass, some very green grass. A third thing that I see is a blue jay up in a tree. A fourth thing that I see is some sticks. I see a pile of sticks. And the fifth thing that I see on my walk is some green moss on some stone. The next step in our grounding activity is to identify four things that we can touch. So the first thing is along with seeing the stones, I can touch the red stones that I see. I can feel that they're smooth and at some parts on the stone, they're rigid. Another thing that I can touch are these leaves and I can feel how soft they are and I can feel the grooves if in the tiny little um, veins that you can see in the leaf. The next thing that I can touch is this stick that I found. I can feel the rigid edges and how the bark is peeling away in some spots. I can also feel the dried moss on those pieces, which these are a little softer than the stick itself. The last thing that I can touch are these little tiny clovers that I found growing in the grass. Similarly to the leaves, I can feel how soft they are and I can feel the little rigid veins that are in each petal of the clover. Both of these are three leaf clovers, but you're lucky if you find a four leaf clover. The next step in the grounding activity is to identify three things that we can hear. So for me, um, the first thing I can hear is I can hear birds chirping. The second thing that I can hear is a car driving by on a nearby street. And the third and final thing that I can hear is the wind rustling through the trees. The fourth step in the grounding activity with our senses is to identify two things that we can smell. So the first thing that I can smell is, is grilling. I can smell food being grilled from someone around me. The second thing that I can smell is the freshly cut grass that's around me. And the last thing to do during a grounding activity is to identify one motion that you feel. And the one emotion that I feel right now is I feel happy. I feel happy because I'm outside and I can feel the warm air and sun on my skin. Another activity that you could do is if it's around the time of sunrise, if you're an early riser, or sunset in the evening, you can take a walk to a nearby open area where you can view the sky. 
Um, sunsets and sunrises are beautiful times and they're times that you can use to reflect on yourself, just similar to the walking meditation. You can use this time to think about your emotions and enjoy the pretty and I surrounding hope you guys sky. enjoyed watching my video and I hope you participate in these activities when you feel that you need time for yourself and time to reflect and think about your own emotions and how you're feeling. It's important that we do this and that we understand that it's okay to have feelings and to have emotions. Bye guys!